name is Simone. I am on the board of directors here at the Art Center, the Ruth Bell Center for the Arts. And today I'm going to do a video on how you can accomplish a really simple painting and have it look really nice. Um, this is not fine art, this is fun art. It's meant to be relaxing and enjoyable for you, stress-free, and very simple to do. All you have to do is follow along. Um, I'm just using simple craft paints because I figured that was something that you'd have on hand. You don't have to go to the store. You don't have to mask up and glove up to go to the store <laughs> and buy it. You probably already have these on hand. They come in, uh, there's all kinds of different brands. It doesn't matter. It's just the acrylic craft paint. Today I'm using red, a couple of shades of blue, some yellow, some white, and some black. That simple. Those, just those colors. And we are going to make um, that painting up there. Elise, if you could hand me that. This is what we're going for. It's just a silhouette, but a uh, very simple painting, but it can be very effective. Isn't that cute? Um, so once you have it down on the canvas and I show you how to paint it, you also could do things like this, like paint on a flower pot or um, a bureau or whatever you want. Maybe okay. do a mural on your barn, <laughs> something like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe what we'll do is we'll leave it over here in the shop so people can, can see me as an inspiration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we're going to begin. Um, I happen to have a 16 by 20 canvas. If you don't have a canvas available, that's fine. You could use a piece of paper. You could use cardboard. I painted on cardboard for years. I still do. It's fun. Um, you just got to give yourself a nice base coat of white first so that the colors can pop. Um, so I have a 16 by 20 canvas. Again, not necessary. Um, whenever you're doing a large portion of your painting, you want a larger brush. It's just easier. I have watched other video videos before where, you know, the, the person on, on screen uses a little teeny tiny brush to paint the whole canvas. Uh-uh. I'm not going there. <laughs> um, I want a big brush for a big project. So the widest brush you have, but again, if you don't have a big brush and you need a little brush, that works too. Um, there's lots of horns beeping outside. I don't I know. know what that's all about. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. It sounds like there's a parade going by. It might be. It might be. But uh, who okay. knows what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> so not not halfway. You never want to go directly halfway because then it kind of cuts the canvas in half. So you either want to go a little lower or a little higher. I'm going to choose to go a little bit lower. Um, so let's just imagine that this is our horizon here. I'm just going to use my yellow paint so that you can see it. And now this is after you've laid down a coat of white. You can start with a base coat, um, but it's not necessary. Oh, Usually okay. for like for canvases nowadays most of them come already so if it's so, already white okay um yeah or what whatever you're using if it's already white then you don't have to paint a base coat of white so um with the yellow paint i'm just going to put in i'm going to represent half a circle here to represent the sunset see how easy that was just give yourself a little half circle like that for the sun that easy and now we're just going to keep whatever's on your brush, just to get the rest of the paint off and let that yellow paint fill up your sky like that. Just brush it off. So we're going to go for some yellows and oranges and reds in the sky. I'm going to load up a little bit more yellow on my brush and dip into my red so that I can get a pretty orange. I might even pick up some of the lighter yellow so that I can have a variety. And I'm just going to take nice long strokes back and forth like this until I have the whole canvas covered with a pretty orangey yellow sky. It's sunset, you know? I've seen a lot of different colors of sunsets. So maybe you want a little pink in your sky. All you have to do is add some white to your red and look at that. You'll have a pretty pinkish color. So the pinks and the yellows and the reds, I mean the reds and the <laughs> red and white makes pink, but it all kind of blends together, you can see. If by chance your paint is not moving easily on your canvas or whatever, if you're using cardboard, 
You just want to give yourself a little dip in the water. Water um, thins out your acrylic paint and helps it move across your surface much more easily. Um, so if you, if you go into your little sun that you've made, it's not a big deal. We'll just fix it afterwards. We'll, we'll clean it up after. See how I kind of have a lot of the different colors on my brush? I have the yellow and some pink, a little bit of red, and then I just let those colors blend together right onto the canvas. I don't worry about blending them out before I put it on. And it makes a very effective, pretty sky. Isn't that pretty already? It's all blended great. together beautifully. Yeah. It's nice. <clears throat> just like a sunset in nature is, you know, a lot of different colors. Yeah, lots of different colors. So like I said, a little red, if you add a little white to your red, it makes a pretty pink color. Just load up your brush with all those reds and yellows. A little bit of white. Somebody's coming in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have company. I think we have company. Hello. <laughs> well, I thought I heard the door open. Me too. Oh, they're probably coming to get the key for the barn. So. Oh, maybe. I don't know. We're just gonna keep rolling. We'll just keep rolling. <laughs> I didn't keep rolling for the bumblebee, but <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna keep rolling. <laughs> Yeah, we just did another video and a bee came in and uh, I got a little freaked out, so. I said she should have kept the camera rolling because it would have been great. It would have been great bee roll. You would have, yeah, bee roll for the bee. You would have seen me freaking out and hiding behind the walls and chairs. <laughs> yeah. It's a... So you can see I went over my son a little bit. That's all right, I'm, I'm, I'll fix it after. Put it back in. Um, I think I'm going to go a little darker up in the corner with my reds here. Am I still on? Uh, am I still in the screen? You are. Okay, good. You are still in the screen. Awesome. Doing good. So this nice. is a great project for people to to do at this time when everybody's kind of, you know, hunkered down and... Right. Um, now, is this the type of project that, you know, you know, families could do so you could have brothers and sisters and Absolutely. everybody could do their own thing? Absolutely. Even, um, even my four-year-old granddaughter <laughs> likes to follow along with me. Really? Yeah. Four years old? Four years old. Wow. I think if you give them you give them access to art supplies, they'll learn to use them, you know. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great, you know, indoor project and, you know. It is. We're all looking for something to do and a way to keep the kids. See how I just picked up just a little bit of white? Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of white. You don't need to rinse your brush. Those colors can stay on there. They're a part of the sky. Just pick up a little bit of white and just brush it in and it looks like a little faded cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy to do. And there we go. Look at that. Pretty sky already made. It's beautiful. Now I'm going to put my sun back in here. The sun is setting. I, I put a little white there to cover up what I had gone over, but I'm just going to pick up some more yellow. I have two shades of yellow. I have a darker one and a lighter one. Whatever you have on hand is fine. If you feel yours is too dark, just add a little white to it. Actually, some most times yellow, for some reason, yellow paint can be very translucent. So sometimes you have to add white to make it show up. You just kind of layer it on. Yeah, just lay on there. So there we go. We've made our sky. How pretty is that? There you go. And you don't even have to worry too much about your horizon if it's crooked or whatever. So we're going to put a little land back there. See how I make some little, like, look like trees in the distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to start on the water. Again, whatever's on your, left on your brush, 
I like to put it on the canvas because whatever's in the sky reflects on the water. So you might as well get that color in there while you have it on the brush, right? So I just kind of put it on there, just a dry, this is called dry brushing, actually. All right, get rid of that. Now, now you might want to rinse your brush at this point. Plus you want to get a little bit of water on your brush for putting on the next layer of paint here for the water. Um, I have this pretty kind of teal color. Um, I'm just gonna go go for it and see what it looks like. It might be too dark. Oh no, that's pretty. Ooh, it looks like tropical water, doesn't it? It does actually. <laughs> I want to go there. <laughs> it's like you're in the Mediterranean somewhere. <laughs> oh, I've been saying all along, why couldn't I have been under quarantine on the deserted <laughs> island through this time? I know. <laughs> why did I have to be at home during this situation? Why couldn't I be on the deserted island somewhere? Mm, you have to use your imagination and paint it instead. Exactly. Oh. Maybe <clears throat> that's a good idea. Just think about where you'd rather be <laughs> stuck during this pandemic. But <clears throat> yeah, there's something magical about sunsets. I mean, I, I was in um, <clears throat> I was in California for eight years, and I photographed a lot of sunsets. And oh, must have been beautiful. Yeah, I was out there every night, you know, um, mm -hmm. just because it was just so different every time I would go, and there's just so much magic in the sky. Yeah. So pretty. So for the heck of it, I just picked up a little tiny bit of blue. I should have showed you that on camera. This is what I did. I literally just picked up a little darker blue on the corner of my brush, and then I put it in on the bottom. Because things that are closer to you are generally a little bit darker, and things that are further away from you get lighter. So I used a lot of water when I started, and I see it's kind of dripping a little bit. Yeah. I kind of like that, actually. <laughs> but I'm just going to add a little bit of white with my teal, and just go right over that and blend it out. Not a big deal. I always say there's no mistakes in art. Give myself a nice That's a good philosophy. Again, it doesn't matter because we're going to put land back there, and it's not even going to show. If we were straight or not, it doesn't even matter. So once you put the land in, just put a little bit more dark. Dark colors add drama. So I think that's part of the reason why a, a um, silhouette is so, is so effective, because it adds such drama to your photo. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have that. Now we have our sky, we have our sunset, and we have our water. Look at how quick that went. So easy, stress-free. It's so good to run your brush over the canvas. There's something <laughs> therapeutic about it. Okay, so I was using that big brush this whole time. I'm gonna switch now to a smaller brush. Let's see if I can find my favorite. Here's my favorite. Well, actually, I don't want to. Yeah, it's fine, I'll use this one. This is called a Filbert brush. Again, not important, you use whatever you have. Oops, I guess I made it blue. <laughs> um, we're going to put in our trees, like the land in the background there. I'm going to mix up some red and blue together. I don't know if you can see that, if it's on camera or not. I'm just mixing a little bit of red on my brush and a tiny bit of blue. So I get like this sort of like a purplish lavender kind of color. I'm going to add a little white because it's awfully dark. And again, I'm not necessarily blending the colors. I'm kind of just leaving them all on the brush. I got the red, the blue, and a little bit of white. So I get this kind of like three tones. And literally, we're just gonna go dab, 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 like that to represent trees way far away. Look at that, that's all you have to do. You don't want it straight across, so you kind of want to go up and down. Just little taps, tap, 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 like that. It's gonna look like trees. Far off in the distance. Happy little trees, as <laughs> Bob Ross would say. <laughs> and happy little trees way far away. And just going across here, different different heights. You know, they don't all grow in the same height here. 
little taps. Little taps on the brush. I might go a little bit darker. You know how I said darker is closer to you? So the layer in front of those could be a little bit darker. See how that works? So mm -hmm. when it shows up, you can see it. And I kind of like the um, the light showing through there in between, in between the trees. Represents like leaves. That time I went into straight blue and that looks pretty. Just my navy blue that I have here. Kind of following the that horizon line that we put in. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal if you go over it a little bit. It's fine. We're gonna I'm gonna show you how to make it look like water in a minute. So now that we've capped in our little land and trees. We're going to put in our sailboat. Um, this is considered the silhouette. So it's not difficult. If you think of a sailboat, actually, I have no idea what a true sailboat looks like. I just made this up. I think it's okay. I mean, <laughs> so if you, um, you want to be kind of like in, not directly in front of the sunset, but maybe like a little bit to the side. I'm gonna make a straight line down for the mast. I think that's what it's called. I don't know, I'm not a professional sailor. <laughs> um, and then a straight line across. So it's, now it looks pretty much like an upside down T. See that? So straight line down for the mast, and then a straight line across for the, for the boat part. Okay, and now we're gonna make a little line coming down on both sides like this and then we're going to connect them so now we can fill that in i'm using black paint by the way if i didn't mention that this is the black paint that's what makes our silhouette so effective because the black is so dark and dramatic against all our colorful sky and water um, my paint is very wet, so I'm having a hard time with the, it's kind of running a little bit, but that's okay. We'll keep going. And now we're going to put the sails in. Um, I like to get, sometimes I like to get fancy with my sail. It's basically just a triangle, so I won't get too fancy yet. I'll show you that. It's just a little bit to the right of the mast. You're gonna come down and, and don't stop right at the boat, like stop above it. Give yourself a little space between your mast and your sail, okay? And now it's basically just a triangle like that. Come down and then connect it, just like that. And then fill it in. My, again, my paint is very wet, so it's not gonna be as not going to get the right coverage, but for the sake of time here, just trying to keep going, you know. So there we go. There's one side of our sail. And now the same thing on the other side, maybe just a little bit lower. So your the right side of the sail starts up here. Maybe your left side could start a little bit lower. Again, leave a space between the mast and don't come all the way down to the bottom of the boat. Give yourself a little space and then across the bottom and then connect it again like a triangle. Kind of a wonky triangle, but, <laughs> but it's a triangle. And then fill that in. See how quickly our painting is coming together? Amazing. We have a boat. Yep. And I'll, I'll clean that up after, but now at the top, it's always fun to have a fun little flag going across. So I like to go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then I turn my brush, like see how I'm turning it so that it gets a skinnier stroke. Look how cute that is. It's cute. Let's see what else we can do here to make it fancy. 
I'm just going to clean up my my lines here on the boat, make them neater. I don't know how good I can do for the sake of time here because my paint is not dry. But we'll, um, we'll do the best we can for now. I'm sure it looks fine. It does. Again, we're going for fun art here, not fine art. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So it's fun, it's an effective painting, and it might not hang in a museum, but you know, you could put the, put this up in a bathroom or something and be proud of it. It's really cute. I think it's adorable. Let me put a little thing up there. Yeah. I wonder who's driving the boat. <laughs> Sailing this boat. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're taking a nap on the boat. Let's uh, go That's with that. It. They're lying down. They're lying down. <laughs> they're enjoying the sunset. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to put some birds in the sky because that just adds life and uh, some motion. I'm using a, a finer brush here. It's the skinniest one I had handy, and I don't know what's going on. It's a, it's it's got the hair <laughs> sticking out, but. So this is how, a, this is a very, very simple bird. You could literally make the letter V like that. And there you go, you have a bird. I make mine a little bit fancier. I get kind of like curvy with the, with the wings like that. But um, honestly, like doesn't that look like a bird too? Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling a little inadequate on bird making, you could just do that, make a V and then Sometimes I make a little bit more of a body on the bottom like that, but you don't have to. So let's see, if, if you want to make some looking like they're really far away, you just make them tinier like that, like a little, little flock of seagulls far, far away. That looks cute. That's that really cute. a little bit of life to the photo to our painting. I'm going to put one more over here. I think it's flying that way. Oh, that's cute. That's great. All right, now we're going to make our water really come to life here. I'm going to pick up another brush. I'm going to go for a medium sized brush here. I think it's the one that I use when I did the sailboat. I don't want all that black on it, so. We are going to pick up some white paint on our brush and we are going to just lightly dab in along the back there to make it look like it's the edge of the water. See that? Doesn't have to be straight across, you can make little spaces, but you just want to where those trees met the water there, right between the trees and the water. And then, with the same white paint, maybe a little more, if you think of, sorry, I hit the camera. <laughs> if you think of kind of like the letter Z almost, I'm kind of just going back and forth with like a, like a Z motion. See how I'm doing that? Think of the letter Z back and forth. I have a little bit of yellow on there too. That's good. It's reflecting the sun, you know, just a little back and forth makes it look like water. If you wanted it wavy, you could make waves, but we don't want the, the sailboat to tip over. So we're just <laughs> going to make light little water here. There we go. Now to make this even a little more effective, um, you could even go really crazy with the highlights, but you just want to add like a little, little white here and there where the sun would reflect like off the top or maybe on the side of the boat like that. Maybe it's picking up some light right there on the top of the boat. You could even use some of your yellow for that, or the white and the yellow mixed together, just add a little highlight. 
like that just for some fun and then maybe because the sun sets right there you want to have a little bit more brightness because it would be reflecting the sunlight as it's setting and now the other thing too the boat would be casting a shadow the sun is the sun's back there so the shadow would be coming this way so we're just going to mix up a little bit on our brush maybe um some black with a little bit of the dark blue so it's not completely black it's just more of a a little bit bluish black, I guess is the word. We're gonna take the shape of the boat, right? So reverse, it would go this way, like it's making the shadow like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because again, the, the waves would have it be it wouldn't be the perfect shadow, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And then the mast comes down like that. I have to lift my <laughs> canvas up a little bit. And then you would see a little bit of the Whenever you add sh shadow and light, it makes a very effective painting. Again, the water would be moving so you could put some strokes in there like you were doing those Z, that Z motion that I showed you how to do the white. And there we go. What do you think? Beautiful. We made an awesome painting. Another little trick I like to do is sometimes the birds that are flying up in the sky, if you just take a little bit of white and the birds are above the sun, so if you just want to hit the wings with a tiny bit, with a little bit of white underneath, make it look like it has a little bit of reflection there. Same thing over here. Maybe not both sides, but the side facing the sun. Just add a little, just that little extra touch, you know? It all, it all comes together. Pretty. Yeah, looks great. It's beautiful. So I could do a little more work on my sail to fill in that black that I couldn't do before because my paint was too wet. But I think this comes out really cute. It's such a fun, easy painting, stress-free. You can do it with your whole family. Just follow along and I hope you try it. And please, if you do this painting, take a picture of it and put it on our Facebook page so that we can see your great paintings that you made. That Thank you great. so much for watching. Have a great night. Bye.